Hello, I'm Chris Smith. This week, how a new technology can help recovery from a heart attack. My name's Dr Charles Warringham at Queensland University of Technology in Brisbane, Australia. And uh, I'm actually in the School of Human Movement Studies, where one of the things we look at is the relationship between exercise and health broadly. And I've recently been involved in a project where we've been trying to apply this to the problems that people face when they've had heart attacks or heart surgery, and they really require cardiac rehabilitation, which typically involves a, uh, a form of monitored exercise and, and other activities. And one of the big problems is that certainly here in Australia and really around the world, lots of people can't access these programs because they're usually in hospitals. And very frequently, people have uh, either a bit of a distance to travel, and that makes it quite impractical, or they have to get back to work shortly after coming out of hospital. And so we've been trying a method whereby we can uh, fit them up with some uh, smartphone and some uh, small portable devices and actually monitor their exercise in real time when they're out walking out, outdoors. So when you say cardiac rehabilitation, what is that actually trying to achieve and how is it done in the ideal setting? Well, in the normal setting, it's done in a hospital after an individual has had, uh, typically they've had a heart attack or they've had other symptoms that have led them to a, a stint in the hospital, and very often this will lead to uh, bypass or, or other surgery. And it's pretty usual now around the world that uh, unless there's a reason not to, patients will then be referred after they've uh, staged an initial recovery to a, an organized program which partly uh, gives them education about uh, diet and, and smoking and other sorts of support. But almost all the programs depend upon the use of uh, appropriate levels of exercise to help restore uh, real functional fitness. So these are face-to-face -face interactions and the point you're making is it's actually quite difficult for people to get back into hospital where these things currently take place. That's often the case and I think in a country like the UK obviously where there's uh, excellent transport and a fairly dense uh, population typically people can get to hospital relatively easily although if you live in the middle of the Peak District that might not be so clear. In countries such as Australia and North America, Canada and the United States um, large numbers of people simply live too far away from these programs to be able to access them. So they're referred, they're clinically uh, referred to the program, they're considered to be people who will really benefit, reduce their risk of another heart attack and we know on, from the statistics that people who do complete an appropriate rehabilitation program uh, have uh, less likelihood of a recurrence, a shorter stay back in hospital if they do have to go back in and uh, live longer. And the costs to the health system go down. So it is a really important activity, but unfortunately, typically around about perhaps as, uh, as few as a third of eligible patients actually get to complete a program. So how did you intervene? What have you done to try to solve this problem? Well, what we've uh, run is a, uh, a feasibility study, that is to really try and find out whether it can be done in the first place, of a system whereby rather than having the patients come to us, we send what we need to the patient so that they can really incorporate their rehabilitative exercise in their normal daily lives. For example, if you imagine a person who uh, might be a farmer uh, who can't make it into the, uh, the hospital in the, in the nearby town, and has a routine that uh, means that he or she's got actually plenty of time to, to engage in exercise, but they're probably quite anxious, having spent perhaps uh, a week or so in the hospital. They may not have uh, been a, a very conscientious exerciser before. Very often they're concerned that they may uh, exercise inappropriately. Everyone's been telling them before they leave the hospital that one of the things you should do is to increase your levels of activity and uh, become fitter because that will protect you against further heart uh, problems. What we've done is to send out uh, a small kit to them that consists of a, a smartphone programmed so they don't have to actually dial anything, they just turn it on, and a small heart monitor which uh, measures uh, ECG or heart signal. And that's uh, streamed back into the, uh, into the laboratory where we have an exercise scientist who can get on the phone to them and organize uh, typically a walking or perhaps in some cases we've done cycling and a bit of jogging, but an appropriate exercise uh, program with them and we phone them before and after every session. And they can really do it at their convenience. It's effectively telemedicine, isn't it? You're remotely helping someone and giving feedback, and you're able to monitor their performance from the laboratory rather than either of you having to travel. But how does this actually help? Have you got evidence that this really does make a difference to these people? 
Well, this is a, a, a first step uh, down the road of, of telemedicine, and, and obviously this is, is one example of, of many uh, sorts of projects like this that are, are starting to be examined. And so our first question really was, can it be done technically? Because you have to obviously develop a system that has to be robust enough that the signal doesn't drop out too much and uh, that people can actually physically use it. Remembering that a lot of people who have uh, who are in the heart attack uh, age range may not have had much experience with equipment, and sometimes they can be really put off if they have to fiddle around with little phones and so forth. So we had to devise a system, see whether it would work in a small series of patients. And one of the main things we really wanted to see is if we gave them a, a six-week uh, program with uh, typically uh, exercise uh, on uh, three sessions per week over that period, whether their functional fitness measured by how far they can walk in a, a fixed time improves along the lines that we would expect if they were in a hospital-based program. And unfortunately, that's pretty much what we found. And how many people did you involve to start with? This is quite a small study. Uh, we had um, what we might call a convenience sample of, of seven patients who had been referred to cardiac rehabilitation but uh, could not undertake it. And we conducted uh, something in the order of 130 uh, exercise sessions with them. And the feedback from the subjects, was that good? Yes, uh, well, by and large, I have to say they, they did find it very useful. I think that one of the things that actually I had not appreciated myself beforehand is how much anxiety surrounds the recovery from, from a heart attack and, from, and heart surgery. And I believe that one of the benefits, in addition to simply monitoring not only their exercise, because we use GPS to see their walking speed in real time and we could give them feedback about how, how much and how far and how fast they should be, should be walking, we could also, of course, look at their ECG signal. So if there were any clear ECG changes that were problematic, wouldn't we be able to refer that to their, to their doctor? But I think the main thing really is uh, reassurance. It's the fact that uh, they're not on their own. They know they should be exercising and that this level of support uh, gives them the confidence to, to actually do it. So I think that's an important element. And I think actually for telemedicine in general, that may be a really interesting feature for people to explore. As someone who has driven around in rural bits of Australia quite a bit. I couldn't make many mobile phone calls in some places. The signal was zilch. Yes. So are you going to be able to surmount that one? Um, it's not absolutely foolproof, that's for sure. The study that uh, we've just published used the older GPRS network, which is a less has less adequate coverage than, than Australia has currently. Now there are, are 3G networks, which are much more widespread, actually. And in fact, we've uh, subsequently gone on to try this uh, as for chronic disease management in rural patients referred to us by GPs. And surprisingly good coverage, actually. So as long as people are near, reasonably near uh, even quite small towns, or in some instances, we've had people who say, oh, look, I drive between uh, this small hamlet and uh, a nearer town, and because it's on a roadway, often there's coverage along there. So sometimes people will exercise in quite cu peculiar places. But uh, the coverage issue is uh, can be a problematic, but it's surprisingly uh, widespread now. And is the next step to now scale this up and say, right, we'll do a bigger a cohort and follow them over time, see if they have a better outcome than people who don't get involved in one of these strategies, or branch out into different diseases and see if you can extend this initial success to other diseases? Yes, I think there's a, a couple of directions are sensible. Uh, in the case of cardiac rehabilitation, I think two sorts of questions are need to be answered now. One is if we compare it to the, if you like, the gold standard of hospital-based rehabilitation in a larger group, the proper um, controlled trial, can we demonstrate or can we determine whether it's um, as efficacious and, uh, and works as well? The other question really is because this population is, uh, we have to remember, of people who've been told to exercise but are not always able to access a program, is to compare it to the outcomes for those people. But uh, more broadly, I think there's application also to other groups. And quite, we're quite interested in looking at stroke rehabilitation, which is uh, provision of which in many countries is even less adequate, perhaps, than cardiac rehabilitation. And by incorporating accelerometry and other inertial sensing devices, we can also stream data about a person's walking, for example. So that would uh, assist in giving feedback about their recovery. Queensland University of Technology researcher Charles Warringham. He published that investigation this week in the journal PLOS One. And there are more science news stories like that at thenakedscientists.com forward slash news. Thanks for listening and goodbye.